Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to tutorial which is about metalness and specularity. In the last tutorial, we went over bump mapping. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about metalness and specularity so that we can make sure that the wood looks like wood and our metal looks like metal. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's control that specularity. Let's work on that specularity. I'm going to zero up the, out the bump map for now, just so you can re I can really demonstrate how this metalness and specularity work. So let's go back into our regular barrel shader. And I'm going to press stop because it's rendering. And let's talk about metalness. So metalness is part of color. So you can see there's a base. This is the base color. And then we have a metalness. So if I crank this value all the way to one, my barrel will now look like a metal barrel. So this is cool and all, but that's not really the, the effect that we want. Again, we're learning some stuff, but really what we want is to be able to control this so that we just have the metal on the strips and ignore the wood. As much as I like the look of this, this isn't really accurate. So the fun thing about metalness and textures is that we have what's called zero, which is basically black and one, which is basically white. So anything, and then of course, 50% gray is in the middle. So that's about halfway point. So we can use this information to create a map that says, okay, I want the wood to basically have no metal, but I want the lines, the strips to be metallic. So. As you can imagine, that's going to be a pretty simple map. We want to have this black, the wood needs to be black, and the strips needs to be a different color, uh, a lighter color. So let's go into Photoshop. I'm going to File, Save As. This is going to be my metalness, MTL. Just like we did before, what I'm going to do is probably get rid of my wood because I don't need all that texture information. And I'm going to get rid of my levels because that's affecting it. Um, I don't need the lines because there's no metal in the line. So I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm deleting them. I'm going to keep the hue and saturation. What I really need is the metal. So right now it's already pretty light. I kind of like it, but the wood is not dark enough. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to click D, which stands for default shaders over here. So you'll notice if I change the color to red, then I click D on my keyboard. Those swatches turn into default black and white. Then do a shift backspace, make sure this is foreground, make sure all this is a hundred and click okay. That's going to give me black. And this is looking, you know, this is 50% gray. This is looking a little bit light, not as light as I would like. So let me go into my color overlay and maybe increase that. Now what I'm losing though, is that cool contrast. Cause remember the rust is not supposed to be that contrast, right? It's not supposed to be shiny, but the metal is supposed to be shiny. So let's see what this looks like right now. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to go to my metalness, click on this little guy, go to my file. I'm going to stop this because it's slowing down my computer. Click on the little folder, go to your images and then select MTL, which is your metalness. Let's see what we get. So you'll notice that it's not really working. It really thinks that we have, we are trying to make the whole thing metallic. So the reason why is because we need to tell it to think a little bit harder. It's like, no, it really impacts how shiny this thing is. So we're going to go into our file, going to scroll down. We're going to go to a color balance and you're going to click on alpha is luminance. And you'll notice that it suddenly stopped looking so much like metal. Now we still have some specularity things. So that's why you're seeing highlights, but notice that the wood is no longer, um, metallic, but, or the wood is no, it's shiny, but it's not metallic. But the nice thing is, is that the, in this angle, especially you can see that this is actually pretty shiny. Uh, the contrast, I want to make the rusty a little bit less contrast because it's still looking really shiny, right? So I'm not a fan of that, but uh, I'm going to just go back in here and increase the contrast. So I'm going to go back in here and instead of using this effect, I'm going to turn off the effect. What I'm going to do is use levels. So I'm going to go to levels and I'm going to increase the contrast here, but I really want to aim for a little bit more white. 
right? So this is my contrast. So anything rusty is going to really show. Let's bring the whiteness a little closer. Let's bring the darkness a little less. So we're getting a nice contrast. And this middle one is the grayscale. So you can grab this and you can drag it to the right if you want higher contrast or left to be whiter. I'm gonna go a little, little brighter, like increase the contrast on both. And let's see what we get. I'm gonna save again. Again, you're gonna get that interesting little issue. That's not a problem. We can always change this to one. Let's go to a metalness. We're going to click on this little folder. You can click on this little folder and find it, or you can just type in the value. I put one, I should have took two. Double check to make sure alpha is luminance is active. And there you go. You can already tell that this is turning really almost like a mirror, but the areas where the rust is, is not like a mirror. So that's actually really looking really nice. And you can tell even now that it's reflecting the sky, the dome. So you can see the high contrast. So that's looking really nice. So that's how you control metalness. Okay, so what about the specularity? It's, you know, we still wanna make sure that this wood is not shiny at all. So what I'm gonna do is something very similar to metalness. So I'm gonna go back one. This time we're talking about specularity. Specularity is the highlight of the object. Just to show you, let me rotate this so I can capture some of that highlight. On the, there we go. So right now we're looking at metal. The wood has no metal, so therefore it shouldn't be so specular. And if I take the weight of this specularity, I can actually increase it to zero. And you'll notice that the wood has no specularity whatsoever, but the metal does. Now, in reality, everything has some sort of specularity. So we don't want to remove it, but we do want to control it. Over here in the, there is another value called roughness. It's exactly what it sounds like. How rough is this object? Well, we told it that right now, if we had zero roughness, you'll notice that that specularity turns into a dot. So it's a little too, too shiny. There it is, you can almost see it. It's, it's just literally trying to tell it like, look, it's so shiny. It's got no roughness. You never wanna go there. So what you wanna do is increase the roughness. As you increase the roughness, you'll notice that the specularity starts to spread. That's actually very accurate when it comes to objects because wood is so rough that the light just scatters and metal in certain areas doesn't really scatter, but where it's rusty, it does. So we wanna be able to control this. Now, again, this is a range from zero to one. So zero is black, one is white, 0.5 is 50% gray. So this gives me an idea that I probably want to create something that is a little brighter than 0.5, maybe 0.7 for the wood, maybe 0.6, something like that. But I want the metalness, areas of metal, to have maybe 0.2 to 0.3, maybe 0.4. So you can see that the range is actually really, really small for what I'm looking for at this piece right now. So we have maybe a range from 0.3, which is again, zero is black, to 0.7, something around there, which means around 30 to 70%. And let's go ahead and file save as. And actually I can't use this anymore because I want my other textures back. So I am going to use my bump map instead, because that one still has all the cool stuff on it. File save as, and I'm gonna call this Roughness. Okay, same story. I don't need the logo. Um, I know, don't need the drip. I do need the wood right here. And the wood is, okay, I'm probably going to add a level. So I'm gonna to go to levels. I'm gonna create a clipping mask. So right click, create a clipping mask. And I wanna lighten it. I know it's a little strange because you would think light equals shiny, but in roughness is the other way around. So something like that. And then in the lines, this one, I'm going to turn off the effect of the color overlay. Let's see, do I want this levels? Hmm. I don't need the lines, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the lines. And with the metal, I'm going to select the levels. The first one that was impacting everything, right click, create a clipping mask. 
And this one I'm going to make a little darker. All right, let's go ahead and make sure that your effects turned off. Let's go back to default because the effect was impacting it. So we can turn both of these off. There we go. Okay, going back to levels, I want to make it darker. So I'm going to drag these colors in. I don't want to go black, right? Because black would make it super shiny. So something somewhere in the middle. And if you need to bring in these values so that it's not 100%. But I definitely want to make sure that there is some darkness, some dark values in there. I'm going to try to bring this a little bit like so. All right, let's save. Let's see what this looks like. We're going to go into roughness. Click on this little guy. Go to file. Go to the little folder and let's grab roughness. Now, again, it's a black and white image. We need to notice that there's not much of an impact. Let's click on color balance. Alpha is luminance. There you go. So now we have a very shiny metal and we do have some roughness on our wood. And actually, I feel like I need to really crank down the wood even further because it's still shiny and I'm not a big fan of shiny wood, but it's really working out much better. It's actually looking a lot more realistic. You've got some nice metals. You've got really flat wood. You've got some nice stains going. And let's go back into Photoshop. So here's my wood. Let's just crank that value to white. Get it really up there so that it's nice and shiny. Let's see if we can save this. Of course not. File, save as. Let's go to two. Scroll up. Let's click the number two. Reload just in case. Press play. So now you'll see that the wood has very little to no specularity. So again, it will react appropriately to textures and stuff and highlights. It's got a little bit, but it's very kind of hard to see. Might want to, maybe I went too far. I might want to go back and just kind of bring it back a little just because it clearly went too far. So just a little bit, it's okay. Um, but that gives you a nice looking barrel with shiny material, really nice specularity, nice highlights. And it's looking really, well, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to stop here, take this, going to duplicate it. And the amazing thing about this is like, we're not really putting that much texture in it, right? I mean, we're, the model is actually considered very low. Let me make sure it's, it's, you don't want to make it perfect. You know, it's got a, oops, let me zero this out. You always want to have a little bit of a flaw to an object so make sure that it's slightly rotated something like that and what's amazing about what I was saying was that it's really amazing what you can make using Arnold's PBR so which is um, which is what we're using right now with very little geometry and five maps we are getting some really nice results very simple really cheap. What I mean cheap is like it doesn't take much to render and you're getting some nice effects. Now, if you feel like the specularity is still too strong, of course, you can always reduce the weight of the specular and that will also help with um, that part. All right, let me just go ahead and save this file, save as I'm going to save this in my source images. I like to use TIFFs again. It's up to you. Uh, let's see, I've got bump color. Let's save. And I believe I am missing one in my so in my images. So let me go ahead and find my metalness. Let me go ahead and file save as. I'm going to go to my source images. Again, this is my TIFF. This is my metalness. Oops, I better change this into just delete that too. There's no need for that. Save this away. No layers. Save. Okay. Go back into Maya, go ahead and connect it. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you the fast way of doing this. I'm gonna go to the Hyper Shade. The Hyper Shade is a library of shaders. It might look a little bit different than what you usually have. Yours has a bunch of stuff around. Um, I just close them all because I really just need my shaders 
and this area, which is the nodes. So if I right click on my object, which is my barrel shader, right click and go to graph network, you're going to see all of these nodes. These nodes just represent the metalness is connected to this map. That color is connected to base color. And so this little connection just means that, hey, this color is connected to specular and so on and so forth. Which is helpful because sometimes I can get lost trying to find where everything is. So if I ever need to find my 2D node, my bump 2D node quickly, I can just grab it here and there it is, which by the way, I need to bring it back. So I'm going to put this back into one. So that's going to help. Oops, you can see that I think it lost all my nice reflections. So I'm going to reduce it by doing 0.2. And now we have some roughness around the edges. We have our metalness. If you still feel it's too strong, which I do, I'm going to go ahead and reduce it to 0.1 and then just let it render. But now we're getting some nice details. We are getting some nice uh, reflections. We're also getting some nice highlight information. So it's looking pretty cool. We are going to have to talk about this noise. You see how noisy that is? We have to do something about that. So I'll show you how to render that in a second. But before that, um, what I wanted to show you is that I def I want to replace this PSDs with my TIFFs. Now there's two areas. You can go to materials and do what I'm going to do, or you can go to textures, which will do the same thing. Now the problem is, is that one, everything is called file one, file two, file three. So what might be a good idea is for you to copy this and don't put a period, but uh, this can be barrel file one, right? So, and this is CLR, so that makes things easier. This is my barrel bump file. This is going to be my metalness. So I'm going to say, get rid of that three. So barrel metalness file. I'm going to open that little folder, go to my source images. Let's see. Uh, whoop, did I not save it? Oh. File, save as, I must be confused, TIFF, no layers, save. Okay, trying to do things fast ends up making me a little lost. Okay, barrel, easy fix, no big deal. Go to file four, I'm going to copy this, Met, whoops, my roughness rid of that roughness click on the little folder go to source images grab my roughness might want to double check to make sure alpha illuminance is on and there we go this is now a nice clean Maya file where you get to create the bump map, you've got your specularity map, and you've got all sorts of great things. So, and it's looking really, really nice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Um, Arnold is a, a very powerful tool, so definitely keep uh, exploring its attributes, but it's all amazing. It's amazing what you can create with just four maps. We have color, we have metalness, roughness, and bump map. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this helpful, please share this video with your friends family or classmates, whoever you feel like might enjoy this type of tutorial. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. That really encourages me to create more of these types of tutorials. Um, also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. You can download this barrel for free and you can use it and practice along with me. It comes with all the, all the files and textures and everything. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can download all of these resources and more for free. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.